morning. Welcome back to the European Fertility Society and my IVF Answers. We are back with more topics. We are back with more fertility experts and our guest speakers. And as you can see, Dr. Manuel Izquierdo Garcia is with us tonight. Uh, hello, Dr. Manuel. Welcome back to my every fences. Welcome back to our webinar session. I'm glad that you are back. It's been a while. So thank you so much for joining us again. How are you feeling? Hope you are having a good day and are ready to um, help us with some of the questions, but of course, also walk us through PGTA, some sex stories, and of course, everything that you have prepared uh, today for today's uh, presentation. And uh, so how is it? How is it going? Uh, I, I'm good. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to share our knowledge with the patients. Um, maybe a very specific topic, but maybe a very uh, a, a, very interesting topic because it's related with many of the conditions we are concerned about when we have a fertility problem. So we will have the opportunity to know about the implication of chromosomes in the in the fertilization, the implantation, etc. Brilliant. Thank you so much indeed. As always, remember that if you wish to volunteer or wish you, wish you to support my every fences, you can do so. Go to our website or you can email me directly. I'll be happy to share some more details with you. And now it's time to begin our um, presentation on our topic, as I've mentioned before, Dr. Manuel Izquierdo, uh, Medical Quality Director at IVF Life in Madrid. Um, will, is here with us and uh, Dr. Manuel will start with his presentation. He will share some success stories and will explain PGTA, how it works, indication, everything you need to know. But afterwards, there will be time for your questions. So as always, please put those in the chat section and Dr. Manuel will be able to answer them for you, I'm sure. Don't hesitate. Uh, you can do it during the presentation or right after uh, the presentation. And I'm I'm looking forward to it for sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Manuel. I think we can start, right? You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's so, get going then. So, uh, as we told, we are going to explain about uh, mainly chromosomes and, uh, and uh, how chromosomes are involved in fertilization, implantation, and the embryo evolution. So, uh, we are going to briefly uh, discuss about uh, uh, what chromosomes are, what is PGTA, when we uh, get a benefit performing this, uh, this testing, and uh, about all of these questions. So, uh, what are chromosomes? Chromosomes are the basic structures containing the DNA information. Uh, this is a very well-known picture, this kind of uh, arms, uh, small structures, uh, that uh, are that are contain our DNA, the the, the coding of uh, how we are, how we are going to be. So these are are uh, the, the the karyotype containing the chromosome of uh, every uh, every uh, of everyone. So it's basically uh, divided in pairs of chromosomes. We have. 22 pair of chromosomes plus a pair containing the sexual information. This will be a male because uh, there is a, an X chromosome and Y chromosome. This is the normal complete structure of the karyotype, the expected to have uh, karyotype. So uh, what is happening with the gametes? Uh, so it's very easy to understand that uh, when we uh, have an embryo, the embryo is containing half the chromosomes of the mother and half the chromosomes of the father. So the egg and the sperm should have half of these chromosomes. So uh, uh, then uh, this, this uh, division is perform under the final evolution of the gametes. So there is a division of the chromosomal complement uh, during this procedure of the final maturation of the gametes. And this is the reason why we find sometimes 
some errors in this division. Uh, imagine that, for example, uh, uh, the, the egg or the sperm is containing non an exact uh, division and is containing instead of one chromosome, maybe two chromosomes or even no chromosomes in a determined position. This is what we call a nucleus. When you have a karyotype not containing the pair of chromosomes expected to have, we call this condition a nucleus, an abnormal number of chromosomes. So, uh, these are brief examples of situations when we find uh, a, a, an abnormal karyotype containing a nucleus, a wrong number of chromosomes. So, look at this. There is a lack of uh, the chrom sexual chromosome. Maybe it could be an X chromosome or Y chromosome. We have only one X chromosome. This is what we call Turner syndrome. And any other example is, for example, this one in position 18, we have three chromosomes instead of two chromosomes. So there are some aneuploidies that uh, are, are compatible with the life and we have this syndrome names and uh, for example any other one is like a down syndrome having three chromosomes in position 21 but many of these chromosomal abnormalities are going to uh, be embryos that are not able to implant or premature miscarriages because most chromosome gains and loses are incompatible with life, apart from these few exceptions we mentioned previously. So, uh, how often we detect a nucleus in human embryos is very common. In the best scenario, in women being under 35, 36 years old, we detect that in embryos being on day five, maybe we are around 30% uh, uh, aneuploidy rate. And if we take uh, our patients going to uh, fertility treatments because of their increased age, this number of aneuploid embryos increased. So we are very used in the clinic to deal with around 50% of our embryos being unemployed. And uh, being mentioned that uh, these aneuploidies can be originated by the sperm or the egg is more common, uh, these aneuploidies being in the embryo caused by the egg. 90% of the aneuploidies is estimated to be because of uh, uh, maternal origin and around 10% uh, maybe are coming from the sperm. This is because mm, maybe the sperm affected by chromosomal errors is lacking uh, a good fertilization uh, activity. So, uh, knowing this uh, so frequent situation of a new bleeding and knowing that maybe most of them are coming from uh, the egg is very important to know that this rate of a new is caused by the egg are increasing with woman's age. So uh, most of my patients are very surprised when we saw we, when we, uh, we uh, present this picture, because uh, in this picture, we, you can see that when you are uh, uh, about 44 years old, 90% of the day five blastocyst stage areas are unemployed. So this means that only one out of 10 of the embryos coming from a woman being 44 are euploid embryos, embryos that could maybe implant and give a healthy pregnancy. And this increase is uh, clearly uh, increasing 
after 36, 37, going to 38. So it remains quite similar until 36, 37, but then it will increase so quickly. And you have the yellow line having the miscarriages. Miscarriages are going in quite a parallel way to the one we have with the aneuploidies. So the reason for this is that miscarriage is clearly related with aneuploidies. Uh, regarding some uh, kind of patients we have uh, in, in our clinics, uh, it's very common to have patients telling, oh, doctor, I'm 43, I'm 44, I have regular periods, all the studies are done, everything looks fine, but I'm not getting pregnant. Uh, my partner's sperm is okay, but uh, when uh, the patient knows about how age is affecting the quality of the eggs and embryos in terms of chromosomal complement, uh, maybe these patients realize that it's not so easy to get pregnant when you have a lot of your eggs and not having the good chromosome number, the right chromosome number to get uh, an embryo able to implant. So uh, uh, not so long ago in a medical meeting we are used to have in the clinic, we were discussing about our pregnancy rates in women being over 43, 44, or 45. They are not so high. It's not expected to have with uh, your own eggs uh, um, um, a very good chances to get pregnant because many of the eggs being produced in, in older women are having these chromosomal abnormalities and makes more difficult to find the good uh, uh, the good egg containing the good chromosome number but we remember in this meeting that uh, a woman being 43 but having a very good ovarian reserve was having so many embryos uh, blastocyst test stage embryos after in vitro fertilization and uh, banking these embryos, performing uh, two uh, consecutive rounds of IVF, we were able to collect a good number of blastocyst stage embryos, and we were able to detect uh, two of them being euploid embryos. At this moment, this uh, woman was transferred the first euploid embryo. She didn't get pregnant. I want you to know that not all euploid embryos implant, but with the second one, she was pregnant and she ended having a healthy baby in the end. So with increased age, trying to get pregnant with your own eggs makes more difficult because many, many eggs are not containing the good chromosome number. But it doesn't mean you have no eggs containing the good chromosome number. It's only more difficult. So uh, at this age range, maybe the balance is if you are lucky and you have a good uh, ovarian reserve and your ovaries are responding to ovarian stimulation in a very good way, providing uh, some good eggs and maybe some good blastocyst stage embryos, you have the chance to uh, go to this chromosomal analysis and maybe being lucky to detect the euploid embryo that could help you to get pregnant. Uh, a, a new question uh, to consider with this uh, strategy is that uh, if you don't perform this chromosomal analysis, for sure you can get pregnant. Yes. In the end is the question to, uh, to, to, to be transferred with the embryo containing the good chromosome number, but uh, be conscious that you are avoiding to perform maybe so many embryo transfers not succeeding because you don't know about the chromosomal constitution of this embryo. So one of these indications should be maybe 
in increased age, we offer our patients this option. Maybe try to have a blastocyst stage embryo is not only the question to consider. Maybe you should consider performing this uh, analysis uh, to uh, test the embryos for chromosome number and increasing the chances to get pregnant and maybe shortening the time needed to get pregnant. And if you don't have a very good rate of embryos or most of them are a nucleus, maybe you can take your own decision with uh, increasing knowledge about the quality of the embryos you are, you are getting. And not only because of the age, because of miscarriages. Uh, we uh, we uh, tell our patients uh, that uh, most of the miscarriages, spontaneous miscarriages, are caused because of chromosomal uh, abnormalities in terms of mostly number of chromosomes. So with repeated miscarriage, um, we offer our patients, apart from other studies looking for assessing the uterine cavity, etc., etc., traumophilia factors, etc., we offer our patients to increase the chances of uh, implantation and decrease miscarriage rates performing this kind of uh, test to their embryos. So, for sure, in my 25 years uh, practicing fertility treatments, I remember uh, some patients having this uh, repeated miscarriage uh, situation and getting pregnant after this chromosomal analysis. Uh, you can tell for sure that if you don't perform this chromosomal analysis and you are lucky, in the end you will get pregnant. But time is passing by when you are in an increased rate age, sorry, um, you, uh, every month counts, every uh, time you transfer an embryo counts, and uh, you need to know if the embryo you are going to transfer has more opportunities to implant and to give you a pregnancy than the one you are not testing and you don't know if it has more chances or, or, or less chances. And, uh, and any other situation we provide this test as an option is when we are dealing with repeated implantation failure. Most of the times the embryo is not implanting is because of the embryo by itself. And many times it's because of the chromosomal complement. So it's very easy to understand that uh, we need to define repeated implantation failure once we have uh we we realize the embryo is good enough in terms of uh, the actual knowledge we can have about these embryos to consider these embryos so good enough that uh, if they fail to implant after sometimes the usual number is three times if you don't get pregnant if these embryos don't implant maybe it's due uh, not uh, uh, related with the embryo, but with some circumstances related with uh, the, uh, the, the, the situation of, of the woman or, or the sperm, maybe. So, in real life, the applications of uh, chromosomal analysis in the embryos is, uh, is uh, very often used and offered. So, uh, very uh, important to note that we perform this uh, test before the embryo transfer and we uh, test the chromosome complement of the embryos and we are trying to discard the embryos not containing the good chromosome numbers uh, we are many times asked about the morphology of the embryos and the staging of the embryos is a is an approach to to try to get the information about the chances of this embryo to implant and maybe this is a basic approach because the 
the morphological aspect of the embryo sometimes is related with the chances of the embryo to implant, but is not containing uh, perfect information about chromosomal constitution. Many times you are not able to detect that, that maybe an embryo is having no good chromosome complement because only the morphological aspect of the embryo. And you are very used to ask us about the grading of the embryo. What? Uh, I have a very good embryo, 5AA. My embryos are not so good because are 4AB or 4BB. So this is only a staging based on morphological aspects. And maybe we can increase the knowledge about the quality of these embryos going to the chromosomal analysis. Because the embryos con containing the right number of chromosomes are the ones who can give us uh, a pregnancy, an ongoing pregnancy. And as I told you with these brief examples previously, it for us is a useful tool to uh, try to help our patients uh, affected by uh, repeated implantation failures, miscarriages, or some chromosomal uh, previous, uh, previous pregnancies having a chromosome number disorders. And in the end, if you transfer uh, embryos being tested for these chromosomal uh, alterations, uh, you can increase your pregnancy chances. So, uh, in in vitro fertilization is a good tool to increase the chances to achieve a pregnancy. And uh, we uh, recommend uh, over 37 years old. Under this age, uh, maybe you can think, oh, you are not, you, you have chances to have an unemployed embryo, even being under 37 years old, but it's not so high. And if you combine the marginal error that uh, testing only a few cells coming from the outer space of the blastocyst embryo, you don't get a clear benefit most of the times. In selected cases affected by maybe repeated miscarriages or implantation failure, maybe it could help. But as a general rule, the main benefit is for patients being over 37 years old. And as we told, uh, when you have repeated miscarriage, maybe it could help and with repeated implantation failure as well. So, uh, brief explanation as well about taking the biopsy from few cells, five, six, seven cells coming from the outer space of the, of the, of the blastocyst stage embryo. And we are asked about maybe hurting the embryo because of this procedure. Today, we are not so concerned because of this, because it's performed in a very, very, um, how can I tell, very perfect uh, way with using some laser to open this space and aspirating this small amount of cells, very careful. Uh, the, the, the chance of losing an embryo because of this is very, very, very low. So today is not a concern for us to offer this because of hurting the embryo. We will freeze the embryo waiting for the result and these cells are sent to the genetic lab waiting for the results coming in about two or three weeks. So. Uh, there are a lot of publications. This is not a scientific meeting for doctors. So we are very used to, to check these publications. But you should know that for a lot of years, uh, this, uh, this chromosomal analysis uh, has been published to benefit in selected cases like the ones I'm uh, showing you today. Uh, I take advantage of this opportunity to tell you that I remember the days in 1997 when I was working in an institution here, a clinical institution here in Madrid, when we established uh, the, the, the pre-implantation or genetic testing of the embryos at that moment in that institution. 
there were a few uh, institutions in around the world uh, performing this kind of treatment, but we are very involved from uh, a lot of years in this because we think that is uh, playing a, a, a very important role in the in the advances of the fertility uh, treatments. Uh, as you can see here in this publication by Rubio in 2017, uh, uh, the, the decrease in the time to pregnancy when you perform PGTA compared with not performing is that you have the time in weeks to get uh, a pregnancy. So a, a clear benefit in these selected cases once again, uh, live birth with euploid embryos rates compared with an euploid embryo so clear. And uh, as a brief summary, maybe uh, I will focus on improving IVF success performing this uh, chromosomal analysis, uh, reducing the risk of miscarriage. Uh, it uh, allows to have good chances of implantation and pregnancy, only transferring one embryo being selected by this chromosomal analysis, reduces the time to pregnancy and decreases the chance of having a baby with chromosomal disorders. Anyway, uh, I should uh, tell you that mm, this should be discussed, all these tests, uh, in the context of your personal situation, your age, your previous attempts, if you have miscarriages or not, uh, to know if this chromosomal analysis is a good option for you. Okay? And uh, thank you for this opportunity to share this knowledge with you and open to all your questions uh, during my presentation. Uh, I, I realized there was there were some questions through the chat, but uh, let me know uh, the, the order to answer these questions, please. Brilliant! Thank you so much indeed for explaining when PGTA should be indicated, and we had some questions uh, in regards to age, when it is it indicated, when it should be indicated, and you already answered that, of course, so um, I saw it and I just uh, thank you so much indeed for explaining. Uh, of course, some questions uh, haven't been answered yet, so let's get going with those, okay? Let's see. The first question is this question here from Fran. So could sperm that has been collected from procedure MTZ uh, create a higher risk of chromosome error? Uh, very good question. I remember the days uh, in the 90s when uh, ICSI was introduced and we were asked from the beginning and we ourselves were asking, were wondering about if uh, selecting one sperm to inject inside the egg will introduce chromosomal abnormalities, etc., etc. But uh, not so not we detect uh, maybe very soon that uh, nature has some barriers good enough to avoid that a non uh, a selected sperm not being so good will make the egg not to be fertilized and maybe the embryo not to evolve to blastocyst state so today today the main concerns about uh, this is that these techniques are not introducing more chromosome errors because of this selection. And I hope that helped, uh, Fran, I believe so, of course. Next question is up. It's a bit of a longer question. With lots of details, uh, let's get going. And there's a thank you from, uh, from Fran for you as well. 
So here's the question. I'm 50, I've done three IVFs. Every time my STEM protocol was 300 units of gonal F, nine to 10 days. I responded, okay, I got seven to 22 follicles, but a lot of them were immature, especially the first time with only nine days of stimulation. The doctors say they were really big and he thought they may, were mature. They froze them at day three and tested them all together. Five chromosomes fish. Two of nine came out normal, but they didn't implant. I guess those two had some issues with the untested chromosomes. I'm changing the cleaning and they want me to take 375 units of gonal F for the first four days, then take 150 units of menopore and gonal F, 300 units. Isn't that too much? My image is 4.05 nanograms per millimeter, FSH 7, AFC last month was 14. Let's answer this one and we can go with the next one, I think. Oh, uh, very surprised being 50 years old and having uh, this AMH level and this ovarian response. But mm -hmm. remember that in my picture, uh, we went to 44 years old and 90% of the embryos were in movement. Uh, this question is mentioning a very, very, uh, very initial uh, test uh, regarding the chromosome uh, assessment in the embryos that was called FISH. Uh, they were only testing five chromosomes, three chromosomes. I remember that time. And we were uh, we were uh, testing embryos on day three, only analyzing one cell compared to today, six, seven uh, cells. Uh, next generation sequencing allows to test uh, the, the full chromosome number. So maybe you are right. Uh, the embryos were tested only with one cell and maybe this makes uh, a difference compared with today and not all the chromosomes were tested so maybe today being 50 years old maybe your uh, the, the number of uh, embryos being euploid is very 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 low even performing this chromosomal analysis today on day five maybe not so many embryos will get will reach day five in your situation and maybe the chances of getting of having a good euclid embryo to transfer is not so high and uh, i'm always wondering that because of getting older maybe some alterations in the egg not related mainly with the uh, chromosomes are playing a, a, a role and make that uh, maybe euclid embryos are not going to implant because of uh, the increased age as well regarding the dose Make today, following the, the guidelines, uh, giving more than 300, 350, maybe it's, it makes no different, difference compared with giving you higher doses of, uh, of uh, hormones. And most of the patients in this situation, maybe the best chances are going to, to egg donation because okay. of all these questions. Okay. Understood. And if we can have a look at the second part, so my other question is about freezing and unfreezing day three embryos. Can you biopsy a frozen embryo? My first clinic tested the embryos from three retrievals altogether. So some of them were frozen, some fresh. Is fish test always done on day three? I'm doing NGS this time. I know I need a miracle to get a euploid. Yeah, you're right. As we mentioned, it's not so easy to get a euploid embryo. Uh, today, the gold standard is day five embryos and, and next uh, generation sequencing. Uh, maybe, maybe an approach should be uh, uh, throwing the embryos being on day three, waiting for them to, to confirm if they get day five, taking advantage of uh, an embryo biopsy if they uh, reach the day five, uh, taking, taking uh, five, six, seven cells in the way we work today. It's not so easy. Uh, not all day three embryos get day five. They are uh, frozen embryos. It's not. It's not impossible, but it's not so. Not so easy. Thanks. Thank you once again, of course, for that advice. Hope that helped you, Polona. Thank you for your uh, for providing all the details as well. Um, short question: Would you recommend test testing a frozen embryo for PGTA, or is it too risky to throw it? Or testing uh good question uh we rather prefer to test an embryo not being frozen but sometimes we test frozen embryos 
the, the risk of not uh, surviving to the thaw uh, procedure is not so not so high, but uh, you need to consider that you are performing freezing and unfreezing twice. So maybe you are at a risk of uh, not surviving the embryo to this uh, double freezing and unfreezing procedure. You can perform, it's not the ideal scenario, but uh, you need to face uh, some risk. Crystal clear. Again, thank you so much for that question. And let's have a look at uh, the question from Cran. It's also some details here. Um, wouldn't it be better to always opt for PGTA testing of all embryos, regardless of quantity, so that only euploids, if there are any, are transferred? There is the client situation emotion to consider as well as the extra cost. But without testing, choosing the embryo to transfer is a lottery. Multiple transfers become expensive and failures are very upsetting. Yeah uh very very good uh, realistic approach uh yeah you can consider at any moment to test any embryo you get you uh, it's not mandatory to have a lot of embryos to test but maybe it's very important to know that uh, if you have for example uh, an expected rate of 70 80 60 percent of your embryos being a nucleoid maybe it's good to start with a better number of embryos to be tested and sometimes you can consider accumulating embryos it's not mandatory for sure but you can increase your chances and as time goes by maybe uh, waiting for some extra months and uh, waiting for the result transferring an embryo not getting pregnant etc will decrease the chances uh, for you to respond to an ovarian stimulation and your chances to have a, a good chromosome complement uh, embryo. Uh, choosing the embryo to transfer is a lottery. Uh, it is very difficult to tell like this, but in most of our treatments uh, regarding in vitro fertilization are, are based in numbers. If we have a lot of eggs, we increase the chances to have a good embryo. And if we have a lot of embryos, we increase the chances. So. Uh, we need to deal with the tools available. As I mentioned, maybe we need to consider uh, a personalized uh, treatment, uh, getting the pros and the cons, your situation, your age, etc. Maybe your emotional situation, for sure. Maybe your economical situation, for sure, because we are telling about expensive treatment. But we need to deal as well with uh, the emotional uh, cost when you are not succeeding with, with the embryo transfer, etc. So not so easy to answer this question, but I think the main, uh, the main uh, thing is to, to, to tell the patient about the options, the benefits, and let the patient to take the right decision, okay? Brilliant. Again, thank you so much indeed. And there's a thank you from our previous patient as well here. A uh, few more questions. If you have more, go ahead, type those in. The question is uh, here from Maria. Do you think that AI support affects the discussion of embryo transfer? Uh, th th there's a question re regarding uh, artificial intelligence. Intelligence, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good approach. Uh, one week ago, uh, I was attended, uh, attending a scientific meeting that uh, maybe this, uh, this uh, artificial intelligence is at every place right now. So uh, in scientific meetings regarding fertility, uh, it's present as well. So uh, we have an introduction about uh, the application of this in fertility treatments, not only for discussing the embryo transfer, but for uh, ovarian stimulation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and maybe the, the in summary, my my conclusion was after attending this uh, conference was maybe we have an ongoing helping tools. Maybe they are not going to take the decision in in the next years. Maybe at any moment, maybe, but uh, right now. Uh, they are starting to show their abilities to help us to choose the best embryo to transfer. But as a helping tool, 
maybe based on morphological approach, knowing about the evolution of the embryos inside the incubators we have today, they can get the information not easy to be uh, appreciated by uh, the humans, and that could lead to give us uh, some uh, details about the embryo most predicted to be implanting. Maybe it's a way to go. Today, we are having some basic tools. Uh, it's not uh, a daily basis uh, approach, but maybe mm -hmm. first years uh, it will have uh, a role in the, in the clinics. Yeah. Thank you so much for the interesting question. And yeah, um, I can expect that AI is going to show up more and more and more for sure. <laughs> Thank you indeed. Um, let's have a look. Okay. So do you detect uh, any, oh, sorry, any aneuploids where the whole chromosome is missing or there's an extra? Uh, very good question. We have PGTA that is regarding aneuploid, the number of chromosomes, but we have PGTS that is looking for a structure of the chromosome. So sometimes uh, patients have translocations. Uh, I didn't have uh, enough time, but a brief explanation. When we are performing chromosomal analysis in the embryos, we need, it's, it's better to know if the parents have a normal karyotype. Because sometimes we have uh, minor translocations. This means for example, that the tip of a chromosome is uh, mislocated, is located in any other chromosome. It has no impact in the, in the health of the person having uh, this translocation. But as you can imagine, when the chromosomes are dividing, maybe this extra part of the chromosome not placed in the right chromosome is going to have an impact in the embryo. So in these situations, we ask not only for chromosome number, but for chromosome structure. Uh, it's a technical question today using next generation sequencing. We are only looking uh, really for the chromosome uh, constitution, if it's right or wrong. So it includes the number of chromosomes and the structure. Maybe the embryo is carrying a translocation, but it, ha it has no impact in the health of the baby. Only the, 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 the no right balance between uh, the, 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 the amount of DNA in every chromosome is, is, uh, is uh, the, the question to decide if an embryo could be transferred or not. So uh, we are telling about aneuploidies, the right number of chromosomes, we are telling about the structure of the chromosome, but in the end, with NGS uh, technology, we are looking for the amount of DNA in each chromosome. And for us, it's good in, you know, if we know the, the, the chromosome uh, level, the DNA level in every chromosome is okay, for us, it's good to transfer that embryo. So, very good. Okay. Yeah. Not only number of chromosomes, maybe regarding minor defects like uh, translocations, inversions, etc. But uh, we we take into account this as well. All right. Again, thank you so much, Polona. And again, interesting question. Possibly our final question here for from Maria. Once again, let's let's have a look. I'm very worried about the PGTA in concordance of mosaic and aneuploidy. What is your opinion? Very good question again. Uh, so, because the information is increasing, we have uh, sometimes uh, some problems uh, defining a good embryo to be transferred or not. When we were performing one only cell biopsy in day three embryos, we were assuming that uh, all these cells contained in these day three uh, embryos, uh, being six to eight cells most of the times, are where the same chromosoma were having the same chromosomal constitution today because we are performing embryo biopsy in blastocyst stage embryos and we get five six seven cells sometimes few times not all the cells being biopsied contain the same amount of chromosomes this is what we call mosaicism uh, in the beginning some years ago, 
we were not transferring these embryos. Today, today the guidelines tell that uh, if they are the only embryos you have, uh, not so many opportunities to get more embryos, and depending on the grade of mosaicism and being advised the patient about the risk they are facing, you can transfer these embryos. Because even being mosaic embryos, sometimes these embryos could reallocate the chromosomes, could avoid the cells containing the wrong chromosome number to expand. And in the end, there are a lot of publications today telling that healthy babies are coming from this kind of mosaicism embryos. So not always we are uh, transferring this kind of embryos, but there is a degree of mosaicism, the chromosomes involved, the, the, the number of cells uh, having this uh, wrong number to decide if uh, the embryo is able to be transferred or not, and always informing the, the patient about this. And today we are moving forward to tell about uh, an embryo with high degree mm -hmm. of being euploid or low degree to be euploid. So maybe uh, today is not a question based on black and white. It's maybe like a, a gray scale. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. maybe uh, have more chances to have an euploid embryo here, and this embryo should maybe is not uh, euploid. So this makes easier for us with a lot Definitely. of information coming from these uh, chromosomes. It gets easier for us to take the decision to transfer or not to transfer an embryo. Very good question. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Definitely interesting uh, topic today and interesting questions. Thank you everyone for joining and for those questions. So it, it is definitely a lot more interesting. And of course, as I mentioned, it looks like that was our final question. So thank you once more. There is one more, one more comment. So I want you to see that my son and wife had three rounds, six embryo transfers, then fourth round, 10 good quality blastocysts, all PGTA tested, expensive, with three euploid. It could have cost them a lot more just choosing themselves. They transferred one and the the pregnancy is is positive, which is amazing. Congrats, uh, Fran. Congrats. Glad that you were able to share it because actually, Fran, I remember she was able to come here every now and then. So I'm glad that uh, there's some good news finally. Thank you so much. And uh, this is always great to hear. Before we finish, anything else, uh, Dr. Manuel, you would like to add? Oh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I like so much my job. I enjoy trying to help uh, people. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very good for me to 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 have this job, and I enjoy a lot of this uh, genetic test, chromosome, the evolution of the technology in these twenty-five years working in these fertility treatments. For me, looking behind, uh, we have advanced a lot. Yeah. Many, many advances are coming. So. I'm very, very involved with this and uh, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to share my experience and my knowledge with, uh, with you. Thank you for sharing then. And it was lovely to have you back. We will be back with some more webinars. Uh, there is one more coming up next week on Tuesday. I hope you will be able to join us. A different topic, embryo donation. So if this is something that uh, you find it might find interesting come here and join us. Of course, remember, we will also have a Q&A session. You can ask anything you wish to ask. Thank you for today. Uh, once again, Dr. Skirdo, I'm glad that we uh, were able to have you here again. And I'm looking forward to some more events. We can see uh, the passion. I'm sure everyone can see it. So thanks a lot. It was lovely to have you for sure. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your evening. Take care. Bye. Bye.